Morris is a suburb on the southeastern side of the city of Melbourne. I think that Bow Morris is probably one of the most significant fossil sites in Australia. It's a little window into a vanished world of Australia that just keeps on yielding new insights. I'm Professor Tim Flannery. I'm an honorary associate at the Museum of Victoria, and it's a, it's a great uh, association to have. Look, I found the first fossil seal from the Bow Morris site nearly 50 years ago now, <laughs> I was still at school. I became fascinated with the Beaumaris fossil site when I was about 10 years old. I'd found a, a fossil sea urchin. Um, I didn't know what it was at the time. I had a beach just a bit north of the fossil site. And I went into the museum um, in my shorts, aged about 10, took the train in, and a man in a white coat took me up to the fossil area and pulled out a drawer and um, showed me what this thing was. And it was just this magical moment you'll never forget, you know. And he told me where I could find more of them. So I got my mum to take me down. And uh, once I knew where it was, um, on the way home from school in summer or whenever I had a chance, I'd be down there diving because it was magical. I mean, the bay is beautiful, you know. The biodiversity of the bay is truly wonderful. And um, but to be there diving where there was not only all of those wonderful fish and sharks and things, but there was fossils as well of an earlier version of the bay it was sort of magical to me. It was this wonderful imaginative experience of diving into the water, leaving all of the ugly development that was happening at the time behind and just entering this imaginative world where Port Phillip Bay was filled with gigantic sharks and whales and seals and all sorts of things. It's right on the bay and there's some beautiful cliffs there, very dark ochre coloured cliffs. And um, it's, it, that little bit of the coast has always been a bit undeveloped because of the, um, the cliffs make it a bit difficult of access. Um, and because it's rocky under the water as well, there's quite a lot of biodiversity there that you don't see in other parts of the bay. I remember seeing elephant sharks, for example, come up to breed there. And um, there was always the dusky flathead coming in as well um, to breed at particular times and flounder. And sometimes you'd see these enormous shoals of pilchard, you know, particularly in the late winter, early spring all heading northwards on their migration with barracuda zooming through to pick off the uh, kind of outliers. It was, it was a marvellous spot. So it's, you know, today, yes, it's suburban. There's houses right there, it's in the suburbs, but enter the water and you enter a different world. I remember swimming out with my snorkel and mask on uh, a bit deeper out into the bay than I'd gone previously and a bit further north. And I found this uh, shelf of rock that was gradually breaking away and there was something kind of strange that had come off the edge of it and I dived down, the water was pretty deep. I managed to grab this very heavy rock, uh, this thing, and brought it to the surface and by the time I got it there I recognised that it was a fossil, a, vertebra a whole series of articulated vertebrae which was quite rare then. Um, I dived back down to try to relocate the spot but with all of the muck I'd stirred up and uh, the distance I'd moved uh, having got to the surface and a lack of breath, honestly, because I was diving back down repeatedly, uh, I just couldn't locate where the rest of the skeleton was. So to this day, the rest of the skeleton's laying there on the bottom of the bay somewhere in Port Phillip. I went back many, many times to try to locate it. I, I took a reading, a visual bearing, uh, once I was at the surface of roughly where it was, but I just could not locate that spot again. You know, it's not entirely unexpected that someone will find it. Uh, I, Among the things I found as a kid was the beak of a, a beaked whale, as if he had whale of Beau Morris, a fossilised one. And um, just, just earlier this year, someone found the other part of that, again, 50 years on. The two bits just click together like, the, like a Lego set. It's quite amazing. Um, but if people were to find the rest of that skeleton, it would be a major scientific breakthrough because we'd have then hopefully the hind limbs, the, the, the back of the animal, and maybe who knows, maybe even the skull is sitting there as well. Bo Morris is one of the most important fossil sites in Australia. Um, there's incredible diversity preserved among the fossils. And what makes it really, really special is the fact that there's this very diverse marine ecosystem or fossils from, along with things that washed in from the land. So it's one of the few sites where we can tie in the marine fossil record, which is fairly well dated, with events happening on land. And that makes it really super special. Some fossils at Beau Morris are pretty easy to recognise, but many are not. And you do have to get your eye in, as they say, for what the fossil is. People, uh, it, it, they should always keep their eye open for fossils because 
you know, it can be there one day and gone the next with a storm or whatever. But what I really would encourage people to do is if they find something to come into the museum and and show it to the experts, because if they do that, a whole new world might open to them and perhaps even a whole career like it did for me. Now, it's one thing having a memento on a mantelpiece. It's another engaging in that great scientific enterprise that just is so lifelong. It's lifelong enrichment, really. It's lovely. We could think about how the might, they might change in future. And, and, and the big takeaway home message for that, for me, is that it very much depends upon how we treat the bay. I've seen the bay change over 50 years. I've seen the motor yacht squadron of Beau Morris obliterate a magnificent fossil site. Um, I've seen what's called eutrophication destroy the bay's biodiversity. So that's just runoff, enriching the water and letting algae and things grow. Um, but I've seen some more positive changes too. I've seen some areas get a bit cleaner. Um, so, you know, if, if Melbourne can get rid of those 300 barrel drains that run into the bay, clean up the runoff that, that's, that's causing the pollution, get some fishing regulations in place, some more effective ones, and perhaps some larger marine reserves in the bay, I think it could be a, a magnificent area. I remember when I was a young kid, um, an old, old man at Black Rock, right near Beau Morris, telling me that when he was a child, you could collect uh, crayfish in the rocks around the bay. And I thought, oh, that's incredible. But the more I thought about it, you realise that so much has been lost. And perhaps if we treat the bay properly, we will be able to fish for crayfish again in the waters of Port Phillip Bay.